Papa Mola to you. This is Tacky Tai. Today we are looking at some new cool and interesting stuff. I mean, today we're talking about nanotechnology and really kind of where it's the new frontier, really. Um, because as you kind of see on the small screen over next to my side, the, the world is shrinking and really our comprehension of the world is has expanded to such a catalytic point that now we have to really kind of look at things in a new perspective to actually find new discoveries about our reality. And especially the way that technology is advancing at such a rapid speed. Uh, I mean, one, one internet year is like five normal years, basically. And that progression is just consistently growing and having that kind of exponential growth curve. Um, so, uh, but yeah, as always, be sure to check out the original link down in the description down below. Give them the love and support that they well deserve to the original creators. And as always, check out my Patreon if you have any other future video suggestions, and we'll watch them together. And let's get started. There's a deep and relatively unexplored world beyond what the human eye can see. The microscopic world is truly alien and truly fascinating. I'm delving further than the microscopic scale. I'm going to explore the potentials of working at a nanoscopic level, a nanoscopic working at a level, level a billion times smaller than the average scale we work at today. This is nanotechnology. And it's so small and really like these are the the technologies like nanotechnology combined with AI really presents the the realistic possibility if not probability that we could like kind of almost like live forever and like all these different things where like reverse aging because like look at for example the, the thing with aging where like there's something in our bodies that are constantly rejuvenating as we're growing up and then at some point usually kind of in our 30s something switches off and we stop rejuvenating that and then we really kind of start to progressively age um, and that kind of switch is different for all different species it happens at all different timelines uh, but what's to say that that has to be turned off and what are the repercussions if we don't turn that off because um, the mind operates very differently than biology in our bodies um, and there's all these different kind of factors, let alone if you combine the, the biology level of our cells with some kind of nanotechnology, um, could we aid that repair process of our cells? Or what else can we do with that? Do we, are we giving away our autonomy um, for just our, our body itself, let alone any sort of um, cognitive thinking? about it if it goes into our brain uh, how would that impact things like would it would we be able to connect wirelessly to the satellites and the internet just like have our input output carrier signals um but yeah nanotechnology means any technology on a nano scale that has applications in the real world nanotechnology is the science of building small and i mean really really small it's pretty difficult to imagine how small a nanometer is, but let's just take a moment to try and wrap our heads around it. Hmm. The tip of a pen is around a million nanometers wide, so nowhere near close. Wow. A single sheet of paper is around 75,000 nanometers thick. A human hair is around 50,000 nanometers thick. And I ran lot. out of things to compare. Let's just take a different approach. If a nanometer was the size of a football, the coronavirus would be the size of an adult male. A donut would be the size of New Zealand, and a chicken would be the size of the Earth. In fact, on a comparative scale, if each person on Earth was the size of a nanometer, every single person on the planet would fit into a single car. A Hot Wheels car. You get the idea, nano is super, super tiny. Wow. We're talking subatomic. That's a that's pretty crazy scale comparison, too. I mean, yeah. I mean, like one person compared to the Earth, or I think even more. Like one person compared to like one person getting into like a Hot Wheels size car compared to the Earth. So that's how big, or rather small, a nanometer is. But why does it matter? Why look at really small things? 
well, they ultimately teach us about the universe that we live in, and we can do really interesting things with them. When we move into the nanoscale, we things, can work with new domains yeah. in physics that don't really apply at yeah. any other scale. Yeah, things operate so differently at such a small scale um, that just everything behaves so differently than anything big. It's really not quite as it seems. It's just so wonderfully different, really. Nanoscience and nanotechnology can be used to reshape the world around us. Literally. Everything on Earth is made up of atoms. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, the buildings and houses we live in, our own bodies. Now, think for a moment about how a car works. It's not only about having all the right parts, they also need to be in the right place in order for the car to work properly. This seems obvious, right? Well, in pretty much the same way, how the different atoms in something are arranged determines what pretty much anything around you does. With nanotechnology, it's possible to manipulate and take advantage of this, much like arranging mm. Lego blocks to create a model building, or airplane, or spaceship. But there's a catch, and here's where things start to really get interesting. The properties of things also change when they're made smaller. Phenomena based on quantum effects, the strange and sometimes counterintuitive behavior of atoms and subatomic particles. Yeah, that, that's kind of where I was going to start going, especially if you're adding some kind of nanotechnology when you're operating things at such a subatomic levels, um, because the quantum field already is so freaking bizarre, um, and it operates at like parallels uh, that really don't make sense, and that kind of goes into really kind of the fields in questions, or I guess you'd say better, a paradox of adding the observer into things and how things operate differently when there's an observer, such as, as I'm sure you're well aware, uh, everything operates as either particles or waves and how things, it changes when there's an observer, when someone is actually watching it, it acts differently um, than if they weren't. So would that still have that observer effect in that paradox if a AI is observing it? Uh, would that count as a conscious observer to impact that? Um, or, or would it not? And would, an like, would an AI in a nanotechnology? Um, I mean, it just opens up so much new questions, really. Occur naturally when matter is manipulated and organized at the nanoscale. These so-called quantum effects dictate the behavior and properties of particles. So, we know that the properties of materials are size-dependent when working at the nanoscale. This means that scientists have the power to adjust and fine-tune material properties, and they've actually been able to do this for some time now. It's possible to change properties such as melting point, fluorescence, electrical conductivity, magnetic permeability, and chemical reactivity, to just name a few. But where can we actually see the results of this kind of work? Well, everywhere. Yeah, and touching back on the, that quantum, quantum field experiment, just look into the, the double slit experiment. Just Google that and it'll kind of go into a better explanation of the properties of how the observer affects both particles and waves differently. There are numerous commercial products already on the market that you and I use daily that wouldn't exist in the same way without having been manipulated and modified using nanotechnology. Some examples include clear nanoscale films on glasses and other surfaces to make them water resistant, scratch resistant, or anti reflective. Hmm. Cars, trucks, airplanes, boats, and spacecraft can be made out of increasingly lightweight materials. We're shrinking the size of computer chips, in turn, helping to enlarge memory capacity. We're making our smartphones even smarter with features like nano generators to charge our phones while we walk. We're yeah, and that can be done, especially like through something like Starlink, where it's just a bunch of small satellites completely orbiting the Earth in a low Earth orbit, making it so we all have a very high bandwidth, uh, free global internet, uh, which is something that Elon Musk is currently working on. But uh, that could also use to be used to generate uh, and conduct electricity if we have the right kind of battery and we could recharge our phones consistently just by being on Earth. Uh, and that can be charged just directly from the sun if that goes to the satellites and then beam back down to Earth. Um, or same thing where if we're using that with some kind of nanotechnology of where they could use 
really our own energy because each each person conducts a small amount of electricity or energy um, and it could recharge from that basically hopefully indefinitely um, i don't really know how that would work but enabling the delivery and release of drugs to an exact location within the body with precise timing making treatments more effective than yeah. ever before there's quite the list and that's only a few of the potential applications yeah and especially any types of like surgery um, especially like brain surgery where like we don't have the tools or really we can't access that point of part of the brain where we could basically program different nanobots to administer uh, any sort of treatment and or, or small surgery incisions or really whatever to repair those cells on a nano scale. Um. Let's delve into a few of these in more detail. Nanotechnology has been pivotal in advancing computing and electronics, leading to faster, smaller, smarter, and more portable systems and products. It is now considered completely normal for a computer to be carried with one hand, while just 40 years ago, a computer, infinitely yeah. slower, was the size of a room. Yeah. This has been made possible through the miniaturization of the world of microprocessors. For example, transistors, the switches that enable yeah. all modern computing. Yeah, transistors were really kind of the pivotal point that, that really changed the game, changed everything. Have reduced drastically in the briefest amount of time, from roughly 250 nanometers in size in the year 2000 to just a single nanometer in 2016. Wow. This revolution in transistor size may soon enable the memory for an entire computer to be stored in a single tiny chip. Increasingly faster systems have also been made possible using nanoscale magnetic it's tunnel amazing. junctions that can quickly and effectively save data during a system shutdown. The future is now. What? It's expected that using magnetic RAM, or random access memory, with these nanoscale junctions, computers will soon be able to boot almost instantly. Flexible, bendable, foldable, and stretchable electronics have been developed using yep. semiconductor nanomembranes. And those are already out, those bendable filament screens that are like the size, like the thickness of like almost paper. They're monocrystalline structures with thicknesses of less yeah. than a few hundred nanometers. In normal terms, they're really small and super bendy. Oh, they're yeah. particularly useful for applications in smartphones and wearable technology, like smartwatches. Nanotechnology is a definite answer to a digital world that is focused on becoming smaller and more efficient. But again, combine that with the Internet of Things, so everything's always online and connected and real time access data. And also help us start to clean up some of the world's bigger and more pressing problems. There are many applications for detecting and cleaning up environmental contaminants. It is anticipated yeah. that nanotechnology could contribute significantly to environmental and climate protection by saving raw materials, energy and water, and reducing greenhouse gases and hazardous waste. From increasing the durability of materials so that they last longer and reduce waste, to the creation of insulation materials that improve the efficiency of paper towels, allowing them to absorb 20 times its own weight, nanotechnology really wow. has the potential to do great things for the conservation of our planet and the human race. The availability of fresh, clean drinking water is an increasingly pressing issue that can be linked back to population growth, urban mitigation, pollution, and the vast effects of events associated with climate change. Yeah. Nanotechnology holds... Yeah, really, water resource is, is really going to become one of the the trying, the trying trials of our next age, really, uh, with just our boom in population over the last few hundred years, or really the last hundred years. The power and promise to not only detect pollutants, but to filtrate and purify. The magnetic interactions between ultra-small specks of dust can remove arsenic. This is incredible, given that it is naturally present at high levels in the groundwater in a number of countries. Similarly, the development of nanoparticles that can purify water pollutants, which cost less than the process of pumping it out of the ground for treatment, also holds great promise. Basically, getting clean water is a huge problem, and nanotechnology can help solve it. This all sounds almost too good to be true. There have to be downsides to the seemingly endless potential of nanotechnology for the environment. Actually quantifying and confirming the effects of a product on the environment, both positive and negative, is achieved by examining the entire life cycle, from production of the raw material to disposal at the end of its life cycle. There is a genuine concern that nanotechnology will further increase energy and environmental costs, given that the production of the nanomaterials themselves takes a large amount of energy. Yeah, but if you make it, if you optimize it enough, it could really it could be a net negative um, as far as energy costs. Water and environmentally problematic chemicals such as solvents. In order to produce things that will help the environment, we have to use things that will harm the environment. 
Scientists are on the verge of new frontiers all the time. Nanotechnology is an act of exploration, and we're very much still in the early stages, but we're closer than you might think to this actual goal. The idea of subatomic disease fighting machines have been in science fiction for decades, so this- That's just, that sounds crazy. Subatomic infectious fighting diseases. Basically mini nanobot robots that fight disease for you and your body. This idea is not really a new one, but we've definitely come a lot closer to making this idea a reality in the past decade. It sounds like a near perfect solution to many modern medical problems. I mean, that would help a lot though, especially like if you're like on a battlefield or, or really just anywhere where it's like, in addition to a med kit, you just inject yourself with some nanobots that repair you from the inside out. But let's just explore how and where science fiction meets fact, and what challenges may lie ahead. Nanotechnology is already heavily incorporated into medical tools, knowledge, and therapies already widely in use. Hmm. Nanomedicine is the application of nanotechnology in medicine. It's used for disease prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. Nanoparticles can encapsulate or otherwise help to deliver medication directly to cancer cells and minimize the risk of damage to healthy tissue. This could ultimately yeah. change the way cancer is currently treated and dramatically reduce the toxic effects of chemotherapy. That's good. Yeah, because chemo is, is so terrible. I mean, chemo, it's, it's, it's only effective because it just kills everything. Just, just wipes everything out. Uh, where something like this nanotechnology could be so precise and only targeting the specific cancer cells that are abnormal and basically being not in sync with everything else. Suffice to say, researchers are working on it. The increased capabilities of imaging and diagnostic tools enabled by nanotechnology are also paving the way for increased success rates for many different therapies. Quantum dots are tiny semiconductor particles just a few nanometers in size, sometimes referred to as artificial atoms due to their ability to behave like naturally occurring atoms or molecules. That's interesting. Artificial atoms. Because of those quantum phenomena I mentioned earlier, quantum dots have optical and electric properties that differ from larger particles. Yeah, and would, because it's an artificial atom, would it operate under the same principles and rules as a normal atom? with those so like with those different property like quantum properties um and would it would an ai nano ai observing an artificial atom give those different quantum effects or would they cancel it out because it's not just because it's just different. It's just so completely different. Um, As a result, they have many applications and are widely used in various sectors. However, creating quantum dots is an extremely expensive process which generates a huge amount of waste. And we find ourselves revisiting those environmental concerns. Amazingly though, scientists have recently developed a low-cost method to make these quantum dots using some chemicals and green leaf extracts. Tea leaves. The procedure mm. is economical and the byproducts are non-toxic. The results are genuinely amazing with heaps of potential. The research proves that the quantum- See, nature is so amazing. It just always fascinates and surprises us every turn of the, the leaf. Dots created with tea leaves can penetrate the skin and reduce the growth of cancer cells by about 80%. Mm. So not a cure, but a huge leap forward in progress that doesn't it's come with the environmental change. payoff. If it's not just cancer. how we face the big diseases that nanomedicine can transform. Researchers are now exploring ways to grow complex tissues with the goal of one day growing human organs for transplant. Yeah, and I mean, because currently they just grow them basically on either a petri dish or like fuse them with your own body so it, it, it's fully compatible. Um, but really, it's still kind of a, a rudimentary kind of way uh, of growing organs or tissue, but combining a nano nanoparticle and just like those artificial atoms in sort of something that's like a, almost like a 3d printer but just on a on a nano scale from the ground up um, where basically instead of growing it it would basically build it but from our naked eye it looked like it's growing nanotechnology can also improve the way vaccines are delivered and how successful they are including vaccine delivery without the use of needles still a work in progress that's great though an amazing feat once achieved 
but the emerging era in nanomedicine really is the era of the nanobot. Nanorobots are building tiny packages that can complete tasks in an automated way. They hold the ability to sense, respond, detect friend or foe within the body, and deliver payloads and cargo, all at the nanoscale. Uh, what that, that is so crazy. It's just crazy. It's, it's fascinating. We need and them. Like, well, that would really kind of be a pivotal point where we could, in theory, almost be the last generation of humans that could die um now it's up for debate whether or not that would be good or bad um conventional water soluble drugs are far from perfect and present difficulties in treatment however diagnostic nanomachines allow doctors to monitor the internal chemistry of the body's organs providing direct access to diseased areas huh. nanobots can also be equipped with wireless transmitters so that doctors can change the treatment method to respond yeah. specifically to the state of the medical condition they also hold the potential to completely replace pacemakers by treating the heart's cell directly. Research regarding wow. nanobots in medicine offers several opportunities, such as artificial antibodies, artificial white and red blood cells, and antiviral nanobots. Wow. But see, that always, any sort of technology always opens up that new, new sets of risks and challenges as well, where um, they just operate by different sets of rules. So, I mean, any sort of technology can always be hacked. I mean, pacemakers can be hacked. Um, and that's a liability where, and, and really the security on them really isn't that high at all. And in fact, it's actually, um, surprisingly low, which is concerning, but, um, combine that with any sort of nanobots. I mean, that's, I mean, that could turn into like some Terminator stuff. <laughs> They're super durable and could theoretically operate for years without any damage. Nanobots, in fact, hold the potential to address many health problems besides cancer, such as unblocking blood vessels in hard-to-reach areas, taking biopsies, or measuring the level of certain chemicals and other. Yeah, and it would really help, especially in for mothers and, and newborns, where you can address things bef while a new baby is in the womb, uh, before it's even born, to eliminate any sort of defects. Otherwise, inaccessible areas of the body. So we are much, much closer than you might have thought in the field of medical nanorobotics holds considerable promise for advancing medical progress. Mm. But the phrase, so close yet so far, comes to mind, because there yeah. are many challenges and roadblocks to face before surgical nanobots will reach clinical trials. Mm. A few months ago, I made a video on Neuralink, and they're facing the same exact issues we mentioned here. Yeah. Scientists- Especially Neuralink, like coming, combining something like Neuralink, where it's basically just a direct upload to the internet, where it increases that input-output bandwidth and carrier signals in the brain because uh, we have the the input but the out our output is is very limited and really limited to our dexterity um, first with our fingers but now even more increasingly with our thumbs um, and that's still just such a, a slow and primitive way to output any sort of signals um, that we have to communicate with the world so, this have numerous challenges to overcome before the potential of nanobots in medicine can truly be realized. But combine like a neural link with Internet of Things, nanobots, uh, where everything is just instantaneous, uh, that direct connection from like mind to Internet. <laughs> Getting the bots to travel safely where we want them to in the body and actually having them stay there long enough to carry out a procedure is incredibly difficult. Scientists also have yet to work out how to keep the nanobots from being destroyed and expelled from the body like any other toxic or foreign bodies. Yeah. So while nanobots hold the key to the an body infinitely less toxic solution that. to treating cancer, the challenges in getting the solution to the stage of becoming a viable treatment are still a bit in the future. We're not quite there yet. However, if past progress is anything to go by, I don't think we're so far off. Yeah, it's amazing. And as always, be sure to go over to this guy's channel, um, give him a like and subscribe, give him the love and support that they well deserve. And as always, check out my Patreon if you have any other future video suggestions that you would like to watch together. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.